We will now review the dosage form section, where we will explain the principles of bioavailability, present the different methods and routes of drug administration, and finally show the various dosage forms. What is bioavailability? Bioavailability is the amount of active drugs that become available in a targeted tissue. Intravenous or IV drugs are processed faster than drugs entering the gastrointestinal or GI tract, as shown in this image. Bioavailability is therefore affected by many different factors. First, the dosage form. Liquid drugs will be processed more quickly than solids. Food in the stomach may delay gastric emptying time and could increase bioavailability. The presence of other drugs can cause toxic effects or unintended side effects. Drugs must be made up of the same components as those in the intended absorption site. For example, a fat-soluble or lipid-soluble drug is unable to penetrate a water-soluble site and vice versa. The health of an individual can affect different organs and their bioavailability. For example, surgery on the intestine could affect absorption. Other factors affecting bioavailability are the age of the individual a child versus an adult or versus an elderly person. As we age, our metabolism slows and that affects how much of the drug gets to the target site. The time of day may affect absorption. Some drugs will be absorbed more readily in the morning when the stomach is empty. Others must be taken while eating or after eating. Emotional status, such as stress, may decrease the ability to absorb a drug due to the autonomic nervous system activity, resulting in a pyloric sphincter contraction and a decrease of GI motility. Blood flow at the site of injection can affect drug absorption. For example, there is more rapid absorption from the deltoid muscle than from the gluteal muscle. Only lipid-soluble drugs can pass the blood-brain barrier. Therefore, drugs targeting the brain must be specific. In pharmacology and toxicology, a route of administration is defined as the path by which a drug, a fluid, a poison, or other substances are taken into the body. Routes of administration are generally classified by the location at which the substance is applied. There are three classes of administration of routes. Enteral, including oral, sublingual, buccal, and rectal. Parenteral, including routes other than the GI tract. And topical, or applied to the skin. The most common enteral route is the mouth. 
which is oral. Contrast, such as barium, is introduced into the GI tract orally. During oral administration, the drug is taken by mouth and absorbed by the GI tract. Enteral administered drugs go to the gastrointestinal tract. The patient must be conscious and the head elevated. Oral administered drugs are generally slower and less efficient than drugs that are going directly into the bloodstream. In the sublingual route, the drug is placed under the tongue and allowed to absorb. It is absorbed into the network or the capillaries under the tongue and goes directly into the bloodstream. In the buccal route, the drug is placed against the mucous membrane of the cheeks, for example, lozenges. In the rectal administration, the drug is absorbed into the bloodstream via the rectum. In topical administration, the drug is applied directly to the skin and is absorbed into the bloodstream. Parenteral administered drugs are injected into sites other than the GI tract. Strict aseptic technique and standard precautions are needed. Parenteral is interpreted as avoiding the GI tract and bypassing the skin and mucous membranes by going directly into the bloodstream. Drugs must be sterile, readily soluble and absorbable, and relatively non-irritating. Common parenteral routes are intradermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, and intrathecal, or into the spine. Parenteral routes can include intramuscular, or into a muscle, intravenous, or into a vein, subcutaneous, or under the skin in the subcutaneous tissue that lies under the epidermal layers, intradermal, between the layers of the skin, or intrathecal, into the subarachnoid space of the spinal column. To avoid damage to the spinal cord, the injection is given below the second lumbar vertebra. Parenteral drugs have a rapid onset of action because they are absorbed directly into the bloodstream. They will require the use of a needle, a syringe, and a container. Needle position is important and based on the route used. For intramuscular injection, the needle is inserted at 90 degrees to the skin. For subcutaneous and intravenous injections, the needle is inserted at 45 degrees to the skin. Dosage form refers to the type of preparation or the manner in which the chemical agent is transported into the human body. Dosage form may determine the speed or onset of the drug's therapeutic effect. Tablets are the most common dosage form and the easiest to administer. The tablet generally consists of an active ingredient or the drug and various fillers and disintegrates to make the drug dissolve. For example, dyes could be added as flavoring agents. 
A tablet is therefore a granulated drug that has been compressed to a solid hard disk. There are single dose units and they may be coated with a substance to delay dissolution until the drug reaches the small intestine. These are called enteric coated tablets. Troches are solids that contain medicine in a hard or glycerinated gelatin base and are designed to dissolve in the mouth, for example, lozenges or pastilles. Capsules are powdered or liquid drugs in a gelatin shell. The shell can be soft or hard. The capsule must dissolve before the drug can be released. The shells are designed for controlled release. Therefore, determining when the drug action will take effect or allowing continuous action as the drug is slowly released. Inhalants can be used for general or local anesthetics to treat asthma or other chronic pulmonary diseases. The drug is released in the mucosa of the respiratory tract. A suppository is a dosage shaped for insertion into the vagina or rectum. Once inserted, the drug dissolves and releases its content. Usually, body heat causes the dosage form to melt and releases its medicinal content. Solutions are a dosage form where one or more drugs are dissolved in a liquid solution. Solutions are usually rapidly absorbed and may be administered orally or parentally. Suspensions have one or more drugs in small particles that are suspended in a liquid carrier. Most suspensions are administered orally and should be shaken thoroughly right before administration. Barium sulfate, used as a contrast in barium enemas, is an example of a suspension. Suspensions cannot be given parenterally. The transdermal patch is a dosage form that permits the drug to be absorbed from the skin surface to the bloodstream. A patch-like device containing the drug is applied to the skin with a water-resistant covering. The patch releases the drug gradually over time. Sedation is the action of administering a sedative drug to produce a state of calm or sleep. It generally facilitates medical and diagnostic procedures. There are four levels of sedation. In minimal sedation, or analoxis, the patient can respond to normal verbal commands. Cognitive function and coordination may be affected, but ventilation and cardiovascular function are unaffected. In moderate sedation, also called conscious sedation, the patient can respond to forceful verbal commands. Ventilation 
and cardiovascular are adequate. Deep sedation or analgesia is a drug-induced depression of consciousness. Patients cannot be easily aroused and may respond to painful stimuli. Ventilation may be adequate, but cardiovascular function must be maintained. And general anesthesia is a drug-induced loss of consciousness. Patients cannot be aroused even with painful stimuli. Ventilation is inadequate and cardiovascular functions will be impaired. Patients, especially children, can slip from one state to another without warning. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.